thrown by George. He then shoots George, uh, points, uh, he puts a gun at George. Jeremy, Jeremy Davies kind of turns to him and seems like he's going to attack, but he's very scared. And so Ricardo was like, run. And he chases him. And this is where the score goes bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it goes so good. And you know how when you introduced this, you were like, comedy, question mark. Yeah. This film's tone is so... It's all over the place. It's mental. And I think I love it because you're kind of like, am I terrified? Am I laughing? I'm not quite sure. And like you said, this bit feels like a comedy sketch. But at the same time, is also really frightening. Yeah. I feel like if if you put a more traditional orchestral score to this, it would be terrifying. But they've scored it like it's an episode of Dukes of Hazard, with like <laughs> yeah. a, a or a barn dance somewhere, like there's a, a banjo playing. It's like, hey, let's go chase this guy through the woods. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, do you know who did the score for this? It was Nyman, Mike, Michael Nyman, Michael Nyman, okay. and Damon Albarn from Blur. Oh. I didn't yeah. know it was uh, all barn as well. That's yeah, amazing. But they didn't work together. <laughs> they just both right. did the score for random scenes. It feels like, and I, I can't. I'm not sure who did the, who did the score for which one. But uh, yeah, so it's it's a real <laughs> a real eccentric score that I did enjoy. But yeah, the, I mean, the film opens with I'm talking about whether, if it's a comedy or not. The film opens with a quote from Nietzsche of "He that fights with monsters should look to whether he himself does not become a monster." Pause. Second quote, eat me, anonymous, with like a weird like boing sound effect when it comes out. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure what you're getting at here, but I'm gonna guess this is a less serious film than I was maybe expecting to watch. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not. Um, I mean, I think that's like for me. I I love this film. It's one of my favourite films ever. Like, I think it's fantastic. But I do think because of that kind of balance non-balance between comedy and also the the dark bleak aspects of it i think a lot of people struggle with that and yeah like you said those opening quotes immediately makes you kind of go what's this gonna be like yeah and when when robert carlisle points his gun at jeremy davies and goes to fire it but there's no bullets in it he goes that is so annoying (laughs) with a real like comedic delivery (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's in some kind of Ferelli Brothers comedy on anyway. So they chase through the woods. Neil McDonough and Guy Pearce chase after them, uh, but they're too late. They find Jeremy Davis has been killed and partially eaten, and uh, eventually they come across Robert Carlyle. Uh, Neil McDonough falls off the cliff. Gets so he gets stabbed and falls off a cliff, high up cliff, and then Guy Pearce shoots Robert Carlyle. Doesn't seem to affect all that much. So Guy Pierce just jumps off the cliff as well. <laughs> as you do. And this is a, a very tall cliff. It's above tree, like tall trees. And these are useful because these are the trees that are used by Guy, Guy Pierce to break his fall. <laughs> Miraculously, he, he lands. Keeps and just rolls. Once he lands, he just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls <laughs> and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. Finds the body of Neil McDonough. They roll together for a while. Keeps rolling, <laughs> keeps rolling. Loses Neil McDonough. Keeps rolling and falls into a hole. And uh, during this process, he's broken his leg so much that the bone is sticking out through the shin, which I hate when that's in films. Not pleasant. Don't like it. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> No, it's not. Um, it's not the nicest thing to see at all. And uh, Neil McDonough falls into the same hole and gets kind of caught upside down just above Guy Pearce. Not quite dead yet. Starts strangling Guy Pearce, just <laughs> out of confusion, I guess, because they're on the same side. But then he dies, and so Guy Pearce stuck in a hole, no way out, broken leg. But he knows that if he eats, if he eats humans, he can absorb their strength and their essence and their spirit, and survive. And there's this dead guy next to him. What's he going to do? What, what would you do? you going to eat him? you going to die? I I mean, personally, I think I'd just die. I'm not <laughs> sure if I'd want to go as far as, as eating, you know, <laughs> Neil McDonough next to me. But, you know, you say that now and it depends what kind of, you know, how you feel on the day. Especially if you know you're going to get all the strength and probably be all right. Yeah, but is, is eating him raw is the thing as well. I mean, I, I don't mind raw meat, so... You know, I'll have a steak very pretty much raw, but um, there's also the the aspect of 
of biting through a a human yes and and seeing their face next to you as well that maybe just maybe might be a little bit off-putting and well we, we know that uh neil mcdonough's chest is fairly hairless but i don't i don't <laughs> fancy going through like picking out a leg hair from my teeth or something that's not i, I don't know if death is preferable to that but i'll have to give it a minute to, to think about it <laughs> <laughs> uh but either way uh because we're already halfway through the film uh, uh, Guy Pierce Boyd, he relents and he does eat eventually. Neil McDonough, but it, it takes a while because we we see the the time passing by the phase of the moon, and he's in there for maybe I think oh, at least a week. Yeah, he's in uh, there a while, and I feel like it's. I mean, although he does, he's heard of the the Wendigo story and you know getting the strength and stuff. It's not. It's fortunately not his um, immediate. You know, right? I'll I'll eat him. It does take him a while, which, you know, at least kind of shows that <laughs> Boyd is not completely mental yet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, because he, he was questioning Robert Carlyle about like when you when you eat the people, when you ate the person, like, did you feel stronger? Because he's obviously remembering when he had the when he accidentally drank blood of of his fallen comrades yeah. and then had the strength to take over a whole outpost on it single handedly. And Robert Carlyle's like, oh, I remember there's a certain certain virility to it. So, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he's down there. He he resets the the leg, the the bone in his leg, eats Rob, eats Neil McDonough, and then walks uh, four days worth of walking on a broken leg back to the base. Meanwhile, Robert Carlyle is out there having the time of his life, skimming stones and eating people, that, <laughs> as he so desires. So <laughs> um, he's having a great time. So yeah, Guy Pearce makes it back. Dave Arquette's out chopping wood. It's just him and him, Martha and and Major Knox. Uh, but he he makes it back. He survives, and uh, everyone's a little suspicious because no one else came back, and this guy came back, and he seems fine, uh, despite having been out in the woods for for four days at least. So they they need somebody to uh, to man the outpost with the the loss of Colonel Hart. So John Spencer comes back, and he's bought he's bought a new guy for them to to run the place. It's it's great news, fantastic. Um, oh, I accept it's it's not it's Robert Carlyle. He's now he's now Colonel Lives, um, and um, I like that they they hide the back of his face for a while. We don't see who it is, and then when when we see who it is, it's the same when Guy Pearce sees who it is, and he collapses. He just falls over at the shock of it all. We're like oh my god, it's this guy. No one believes him. Uh, he doesn't have a wound on his shoulder from where he was shot. And Robert Carlyle is loving this. You can see, as an actor, he's just... <laughs> he's so... It must have been so fun to just be like, yeah, I'm back, bitches. Here I am. <laughs> he's milking it the whole way. like, Because okay, John Spencer has to ask him, like, sorry to ask this, Colonel, but can we can we see your shoulder? And he makes a real, like, real, real show of unbuttoning his tunic and then one shoulder and then... Oh, the the other shoulder, the other. And it's all fine. He, <laughs> you know, he's just having fun with Guy Pearce at this point, isn't he? It's just. And um, I do feel really sorry for Guy Pearce's character at this point because it's kind of like it's the part in the movie where you know you're going right. It, he's got to have that thing on his shoulder. He has to. We've seen it as well. And then poor Guy Pearce, Pearce is just like, yeah, no, it's not. Uh, it's not happening. I'm here, the cannibal's back, and no one believes me. And yeah, I, I feel sorry for, for Guy Pearce as well. It's, it's the classic horror movie trope of one person knows the killer is here, but no one else believes them. One person knows what's going on, but they're the one who's believed for it. It happens, it happens a lot, but it's, it works very well here. And you, you do feel really sorry for, for Guy Pearce's character. And especially when, uh, when David Arquette is killed and the horses are all killed, <laughs> and they blame him. <laughs> He gets, I mean, to be fair, the whole way through this film, you know, his character gets the blame for a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's all, I guess, just because he was a bit of a coward in the in the in the beginning, which is it all seems a bit unfair for his character, to be honest. Yeah. And, and I think. Other than Robert Carlyle, he's the most outsider because these other guys seem to have known each other for a while now. And then yeah. this guy arrives, and then this other guy arrives, and they just they just trusted the wrong one of the, of the two, it seems. 
they trusted the one who is more suave. And yeah, you know, uh, Knox, the 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 drunk doctor, was there. Technically, when Robert Carlyle wrote the first time, but he was so drunk he can't recognize him. <laughs> and he's like, I remember the guy had a beard, whereas now Robert Carlyle has uh, like a Van Dyke. He's got a mustache <laughs> and a little, a little tuft. So it can't couldn't possibly be the same guy. <laughs> no one can shave. Uh, ridiculous. So. Uh, so yes, Guy Pearce has this vision, this dream of gutting and eating David Arquette, which is, I think, the bloodiest scene sequence in the film, the most like human eating human scene. Yeah, uh, and it's a dream. So, how does that rank compared to other cannibal films for you? That, that scene. Um, it's not as gory as some of the other ones, but I think, but I th- actually, I, I like it as a scene. Like, I think it's, I think it's just the right kind of cannibal gore, to be honest. I think any more than that, and it would have felt a little bit over the top. Like, but it's, it's quite, it's quite gruesome and bloody for, for this film, I think, to be honest. Yeah, well, this is an 18 in the UK, uh, which I, I think it would have been fine as a 15. And yeah. I think given that I think the only thing that ranks it up to an eighteen is that it is people eating people. If if this was if if Guy Pierce did everything apart from eat David Arquette, then it would probably be a fifteen. Uh, but hey yo, there we are. Because there's no nudity in it, other than New McDonough top us in a river. Other than that, it's all just <laughs> <laughs> he's actually uh, whilst he is alive and on screen, he is shirtless for a lot of it. Like when they're bathing Robert Carlyle, he he's like got his tunic open to show it and everyone else is fully dressed it's just no no one's like no i'm the muscle i got this enjoy it so (laughs) he doesn't care uh so uh yeah so they have he has this dream then david arquette is found dead on the roof dripping into in onto martha and uh guy pierce tries to confront robert carlyle about it they have this talk where Robert Carlyle kind of reveals a bit more of the story. Like he, he first heard about Wendigo is from this Native American scout who told him about it. And so he had to try it. So he killed the scout and <laughs> ate him. And it, it was great. <laughs> um, so never do that. Never tell people about Wendigos. They'll kill you to test the theory. <laughs> uh, and like he, he apparently he used to have tuberculosis and depression and suicidal thoughts. And it's just eating people cured all of this. So. It, it, I mean, to be fair, once, you know, once he says that, I'm like, oh, I do feel like I could get convinced, you know, by him. It's, it's a good story, you know, sick, all these ailments, you have a little nibble on, on a human, it's gone. You're feeling yeah. like a new man. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I am a, a heavy guy who runs a lot, so I have problems with my legs, basically. And if I found out that eating somebody fixed that or eating eating something fix that I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll give that a try and he doesn't say you have to eat people whilst they're alive and there's a lot of dead people out there yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. what i'm saying yeah you know <laughs> he, he could he sells it as there's moral ways you know and if you think about it it's kind of just um not letting these dead people go to waste yeah you know yeah. they keep on like you said he doesn't say that you've got to kill them yourselves and then skin them and eat them you just um find them and, and utilize what's out there <laughs> yeah i feel like a, a modern day ravenous would have him working in a morgue maybe or a, a or a, a, a fu- not a funeral home but yeah, like working in <laughs> <laughs> working in a hospital a not very good hospital <laughs> where he'd get lots of lots of meals delivered regularly anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh, Guy Pierce is, there's, there's this uh, fight out in the outside where Guy Pierce manages to stab Robert Clyde in the hand, and then Robert Clyde is so seductive with that. Oh, my, there's, there's blood in my hand. You can smell it. You can remember. Just think about the, the taste. And he's so seductive in this scene. <laughs> and Guy Pierce almost goes for it, but then he goes to stab Robert Clyde, but then Martha comes out and jumps on top of that, and there's this dog pile of people trying to stab each other, which <laughs> is, adds to the comedy of, this, of the film. I think yeah. it's a ridiculous scene. Uh, and so they, they kind of shut Guy Pierce up in a in a room. They uh, they volunteer Martha to go for a long walk into town to buy to get some goods and bring people to bring the Colonel back in. Not the Colonel. Uh, uh, yes, John Spencer. Bring John Spencer back. The General. That's the one. Bring John Spencer back. And so it just leaves Robert Carlyle, Major Knox, and and Guy Pierce. And so Guy Pierce is shut up in a room. Robert Carl starts making a stew, and Knox is like, oh, can I help? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> later, Knox, you can contribute later. 
<laughs> this is going to be a major knock stew. Uh, so, and 